Oh. I didn't notice you guys there. It's your boy, Rob Ross, back at it again with another reaction video for you guys. You guys love my appearance a couple videos ago, so I had to make a another special return for you guys. And uh, it feels good to be loved and cared by all you lovely individuals. We're going to be checking out 10 lame on paper WWE matches that surprisingly stole the show. Sometimes in wrestling, when you look at a card, a lineup, you're like, this probably is going to suck. But then you watch the match and it actually exceeds your expectations. Those be the best type of matches. We've seen it time and time again. And when it does happen, we actually have to sit there and be like, wow, they actually put on a good match. But yeah, man, this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. We are so close. So, so, so close to 100K, man. And I'm looking forward to it. Let's get right into this video. <laughs> One of the best things about the nature of WWE is that any match on any given night can steal the show. Since the inception of WWE, several major shows have been highlighted by a match that <clears throat> on paper didn't sound too great. But these low expectations ultimately helped the match in question, and the performers in the match put on a performance that will never make fans doubt their abilities ever again, stealing the show. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE matches that surprisingly stole the show. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling already. videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive <clears throat> leaves. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Batista vs. The Undertaker. And when it was first announced that Taker would be facing Batista <clears throat> at WrestleMania <clears throat> 23, there was a distinct lack of buzz surrounding the match. At this the point in 2007, good. the Dead Man's WrestleMania win streak was a known for all-time classics, and Batista had yet to pull it all together in the ring. During the weekend of WrestleMania, Batista would be telling local media that he and The Undertaker were going to steal the show. They put and on a good match. Credit, he was right. The match was tremendous, and without a doubt one of Batista's finest matches. Mm -hmm. The two clearly went into the match with a point to prove. And fans go back and forth in relation to what match stole the show on this WrestleMania. Batista vs. Undertaker or Cena vs. Shawn Michaels. But Batista those were two good matches. I I don't know, man. I I ain't gonna lie to you. Those were very good matches. Let me know down below which match you guys think out of these two actually stole the show for you guys. I me personally, I still love the John Cena and uh an HBK match, but this one was really, really good too. Eastern Taker <clears throat> deserves extra credit, as nobody expected the match to be as good as it was. Number 9, Sheamus vs. The Big Show. That's rare for a non-Hell in a Cell match to steal the show at Hell in a Cell specific yeah. pay-per-view, but that's exactly what Sheamus and The Big Show did in 2012. The two would collide for the world title, and the two instantly clicked in the ring. The match was a brutal back-and-forth match I that woke up a rather match. lackluster crowd. It's hard not to cite this as the Big Show's greatest match ever, as he was truly in his element in the match, and Sheamus was phenomenal in his babyface role. The match was so well received that WWE decided to continue the rivalry, and the two would stay feuding until the very end of 2012. Oh yeah, I remember when he had that obnoxiously large fucking chair. I remember that. I don't. Re I don't remember the, the the matches leading up, but I do remember this. Number eight, the Great Carly <clears throat> versus John Cena. Now, the Great Carly had an established reputation for being terrible in the ring, so mm -hmm. when WWE decided to book him in a feud with Cena in 2007, there was immediate concern. Fans were curious as to how the feud and matches were going to go, but Cena, to his credit, managed to get a decent match out of the he did. Giant. Surprisingly, the encounter at Judgment Day without question stole the show, and their last man standing match a month later was also a strong contender for match of the night. Around mm -hmm. this time, the negative perception of Cena began to shift as fans were slowly realizing that WWE's top guy was actually a fantastic in-ring talent. Number seven, Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. As Sami Zayn's work heading into that this match. I wasn't expecting it to be as, I guess you could say, as entertaining as it was. WrestleMania uh, this past year, both nights, well, it, night one for sure exceeded a lot of our expectations, I think. I think unanimously, well, not unanimously, uh, I can't even say the word, but you guys know what I mean. I think the general consensus is a lot of people like night one more than night two because night one was very special, had some great moments, 
And I was not expecting to enjoy this match as much as I did, but I did. To WrestleMania 38 was superb. Zayn was feuding with Jackass star Johnny Knoxville, and Zayn's work, whilst comedic, had a ton of depth. Zayn during his feud truly showed WWE as well as the fans that he could be given anything and he would make it work. The match itself was an anything goes match, and the match received unanimous praise from fans and yeah, fellow people WWE enjoyed it. wrestlers. It was so entertaining and featured hilarious spots that received genuine laughs from the fans in attendance. The match will fondly be remembered for years to come on how to appropriately deliver a comedic match. Number six, The Miz and John Morrison versus Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. This was good. This was, was good, bro. This was good, bro. Really good. Bad Had Bunny no reason WWE to be WWE that debut. good. Bunny is one of the biggest names in music, and his WWE performance broke the mold on celebrities stepping foot in the ring. Yep. Bunny was a genuine fan of WWE, and he was insistent on making the match work. So much so that Bunny trained extensively for the match. When it came, his training showed. The quality of Bad Bunny's work blew everyone away. Yep. Once the match was over, Bunny was now the new benchmark for celebrities to get involved Facts. in wrestling. Fans since Bunny's appearance have been clamoring to see... The fact that... It's, it's really... It's him and Logan Paul. Logan Paul has stepped... He's taking it even higher for like someone outside of WWE coming in and actually performing well. I don't think we'll I don't think we'll see anyone else for a while do what these guys have done. Bad Bunny's definitely shown out and once again he's not even a wrestler. He doesn't even have a wrestling background, which makes his even that more impressive the fact that he really really trained to put on a good showing and I can appreciate that. Bad Bunny's always welcome in WWE in my in my opinion. In return, as and well, Pat McAfee, as well as his commitment to the role, is something that all fans continue to admire to this very day. Number five, Scotty Too Hotty versus Dean Malenko. This I Backlash don't remember. 2000 featured several huge matches, including The Rock versus Triple H and Kurt Angle versus The Big Show. However, it was a completely random and unexpected match that stole the entire show. The match in question was a match for the light heavyweight title between Scotty Too Hotty and Dean Malenko. Malenko was well known for being incredible in the ring, and Scotty had a ton of charisma that fans gravitated towards. The match, simply put, was a banger, as the two had outstanding chemistry and fans were left speechless by how great the match ended up being. The match ended with Malenko performing with an implant DDT from the top rope, and an incredibly creative match finish that is still referenced to this very day. Mm. Number 4 Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar Part 3 well, there was a ton of disappointment when it was revealed that the Universal title match for WrestleMania 33 would be Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. Fans were hoping that the match for the title would be between Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, but Vince McMahon had other ideas. The match between Goldberg and Lesnar exceeded all expectations. Yeah, it did. It was fast-paced and highlighted both men's abilities. When the bell rang, fans were ready to turn on the match, but the in-ring action was so compelling that the fans quickly got on board. There was some notable I think it was because they 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 knew they had to go in there and hard hitting fast paced action. That's that's the only way that that's the only thing that saved this match is it was boom 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 boom. That's it. Just straight straight impact impact impact. That's when it comes to Brock Lesnar and guys similar to him his size, those fast paced high impact matches work. It only you only really get more of a uh, traditional, I guess, wrestling match when he faces a smaller opponent because then they can tell a story a little bit better. But when it's just someone similar to his size, as we've seen with Bobby Lashley, that match worked because it was high pace, fast, impactful, and, you know, it's straight to the point. You don't have to do too much with them. You know what you hear when you see someone as the size of Goldberg and, and Brock Lesnar going at it. You know what you're here for. You're not here for a technical clinic. You're here to see some carnage. And I did not mean to do that, y'all. Sorry, I got a little bit too excited in my robe. ...spots in the match, including Lesnar performing a leapfrog over Goldberg, which was incredible to witness, as well as Lesnar getting speared right through the barricade. The two wrestling legends managed to prove fans wrong, and it just highlighted how any match on any given night can turn out to be a classic. Mm -hmm. Number 3, Michelle McCool vs. Melina. Imagine having a match so good that it leads to getting you in trouble. That's exactly what happened when Melina and Michelle McCool put on a clinic at Night of Champions in 2009. At this point in time, it was common for women's pay-per-view matches to be a few minutes long and they yeah. would rarely steal the show. But the match between Melina and McCool was exceptional. Oh, damn. It has aged incredibly well and wouldn't be out of place headlining a modern day WWE pay-per-view. Now, the reason the two women got in trouble was because WWE agents believed that they overshadowed the men. 
Melina oh, would discuss this during an wow. interview with Ring the Bella, and she stated, Everybody keeps asking me, did you really get in trouble? Yeah, we did. I think we were yelled at for it, and we were so proud. What we did was put everything together, and we didn't tell people what we were going to do because we knew that we just wanted to make something incredible. So I'm really proud of that moment. Damn. Wow. The they got mad. You guys, I got to <clears throat> do my Vince voice. What the hell are you doing out there? Out there giving them an actual wrestling match? What's wrong with you? Oh, if you wasn't so attractive, I'd, I'd fire you right now. Get out of here. Get out of my face. <laughs> That's what happened in my head. They put on a good match, and they they felt like the guys weren't going to be able to live up to that. Or now the guys have much pressure to outdo the women. Man. Hey, I, I can appreciate that. I'm glad she didn't feel sorry for what she did or what they both did because you shouldn't. Put on a good match. Make everyone else step up. I'm all for it. Male or or female. Doesn't matter. Versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Now, according to former WWE writer this was Brian fun Gerwitz, too. the original plans for WrestleMania 34 were for The Rock to team up with Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. However, when The Rock was unavailable for the match, Kurt Angle stepped in, and nobody knew what to expect from the match. This so was fun. Two legends this match was fun. Prime in Triple H and Angle, and an on-wrestling talent in Stephanie and somebody wrestling our first ever match in Ronda Rousey. To the delight of many, the match was so entertaining that it stole the entire show. It did. Everyone in the match played their part to perfection. And the match is considered as one of the greatest debut matches in WWE history. It Just was the fun. The show on a WrestleMania card that had matches such as AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns was some achievement. Yep. And all four talents should be immensely proud of that match. That was a good and match. And number one, Hornswoggle versus El Torito. Upon the announcement Never that seen this match. would be facing El Torito in a WLC match at Extreme Rules 2014, there were groans heard across the wrestling fandom. Just a title the common alone. belief was that the match was designed to make former WWE chairman Vince McMahon laugh, but in reality, Hornswoggle and Torito planned on stealing the entire show. The match was insane. It featured the bumps that would be commonplace in a traditional TLC match, and the two men went into the match showing no fear. Credit should also be offered to 3MB and Los Matadors, who were also heavily involved in the match, and their presence certainly elevated certain spots. Are in the those match. small Swaggle tables? Were going to call the match the highlight of his entire career during an interview with WrestleZone, as a former cruiserweight champion added, "That is the single best thing I've ever done in my career. I'll go on record saying that's the best thing I've ever done in wrestling. That's probably the thing I talk about the most too. Wow. The world that we could work." It was in New Jersey, the second most hardcore fans behind Chicago, and they should have booed us out of the building. Wow. We left to a standing ovation. The fans and the guys behind the curtain and the guys in the back, I go on record as saying that that was the best match of the night, on the pre-show or off. But they have that's, 10 uh, WWE matches. That's, that's wild, man. <laughs> I've never seen that match. Didn't want to see that match, but I may have to check that out, man. If it was that damn good, I, I may have to actually partake in checking that out, man. But comment down below. Let me know what match, when you initially saw it being, you know, on a, on a particular pay-per-view, you was like, oh, brother, this is about to suck. But then you actually watched the match and you was like, wow, this was way better than I expected. Let me know down below. But... <clears throat> I appreciate you guys for all the love and support. Road to 100K. And I appreciate y'all kicking it with Road Ross once again. See you guys next time. Peace.